Okay, before we start, uh, we would like to ask your permission to record this lecture. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, last time we started with our network essentials and uh, we have not uh, continued yet with subnetting. So we finished on uh, network essential. We need uh, uh, to discuss also uh, topologies that we did not uh, touch up last time. So we continue. Uh, so for those who are absent, so these are the topics that we have discussed. So you have uh, your module six. And now uh, we are going to uh, discuss uh, network topology. Uh, by the way, did, did you already discuss this in your networking one? This type of uh, material. Did you remember uh, this topic in your networking one? Because this is like a review already. So, so meaning you don't discuss this in networking one. Either one or two or three uh, topology is okay. Have you discussed this in your networking one? Okay, nobody answered. So, so in this way, uh, this uh, is uh, network topology is the uh, manner of the arrangement of the network. And uh, as an example, so we have uh, this ring, mesh, star, uh, fully connected, uh, line, uh, a, a tree connection, and we have the bus. So uh, this uh, uh, is a implementation of uh, the uh, manner of arrangement, but in our pocket tracer. So this is an example of what topology. So this is what uh, type of topology. If you're going to see all of this, which one is uh, closer to this topology? So basically your what this topology is similar to your star, okay? Because you have the central connection from this point and you're going to send the data in this point and also this point and in this point and this point. And So most of the time, we're going to use a uh, star topology or ring uh, or either a uh, bus. It depends upon the application of your, it depends on the application of your uh, system or network. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a star topology. And now we are going to uh, this. So first we have a physical bus. So this is a bus topology. In the implementation, you have this drawing. As mentioned last time, if you have this figure, so what will happen? So there is a limit of uh, 30 computers uh, per cable segment. So the maximum length you could uh, use in a bus is only 185 meters and uh, both ends of the bus must be terminated. So any break 
in the bus brings down the entire network and adding or removing a machine brings down the entire network temporarily. Technologies using this topology are limited only to 10 megabit per second half duplex communication because they are using coaxial cabling. So this is the uh, disadvantage of using a uh, bus topology. Uh, this was used in the possibly 1990s, uh, uh, but nowadays you could uh, seldom use this. Uh. Now we have the common uh, topology we are using in networking. So we have the star. And uh, the star topology uh, uses a central device uh, such as hub or a switch to interconnect uh, computers uh, as uh, shown in uh, figure 31. You have the star topology that uh, connects all computers. And uh, there is a centralized monitoring and management of the network traffic. And uh, network upgrades are easier. And uh, physical uh, uh, star uh, topology is uh, one of the choice of reasons why uh, there are more uh, people using this because uh, communication options are available and uh, it's uh, it's uh, not typical uh, to use of bus topology nowadays because of the uh, limit of uh, uh, speed so uh, for example the central device uh, can be about uh, 1000 megabit per second switch or if you convert this this is a 1 gigabit uh, per second switch which increases the bus stop speed uh, 100 times and it works in full duplex mode further increasing the overall bandwidth so uh, what is uh, full duplex when you say uh, full duplex when you say full duplex you could uh, send and receive data simultaneously while half duplex you could uh, send or receive data one at a time so that's how difference between the two yes any question okay good afternoon okay so we have the uh one of the complicated uh, part in some of your project assignment is that you need to create an extended star topology for example if uh, this is a campus a school and uh, this one is your library your laboratory your student uh, center and you have your uh, uh, business center so you are connected to one switch uh, which uh, controls all the uh, communication between uh, all computers so that you could uh, manage each uh, computer and manage each uh, switch now so extended star is the commonly used uh, uh, nowadays so it implies this uh, topology is a star of stars so meaning there is a hierarchy between computers and uh, it's uh, connect to a central star which is uh, your switch so this one create a star also you could add another one here if you want to have another uh, connection to uh, perform to another building so you could add another switch so this becomes your extended star with all the clear advantages the physical star you might wonder uh, why whether uh, there are any uh, disadvantages for this uh, scenario but it is worth mentioning that uh, central device represent a single point of failure for example uh, if uh, the main switch uh, fails all network will also fail so if this one fails so all of the connection here is going to fail but it's easier to troubleshoot because we know 
that uh, if this uh, main uh, switch fail, all of the connection will also fail. But if the switch is not, is not going to work, so we know also from our switch that this is not working, so it's easier to troubleshoot in other way. Although, if uh, your dedicated switch fails, so all of the connection will not uh, able to have internet work. Now, uh, we have uh, the term uh, ring topology. Ring is like a bus in devices, but these are daisy chain, meaning they are uh, chained to one another, but instead of ter terminating each end, the, the cabling is uh, uh, brought around in, from the last device back to the first device, which forms the ring. So, uh, for example, you have this device. So this is a uh, uh, fiber uh, distributed data interface switch. So this device allows you to communicate to another uh, switch and thereby uh, connecting them in, on each LAN switch. This allows you to uh, uh, connect to a building if one uh, building is not able to connect, so you could still go to another building. So it's like in a loop that you are able to communicate. But this one, uh, uh, the physical ring also has a, a re reliability issue because data had, be, uh, had to be forwarded to one station to the next. So unlike the bus in which data travels in all direction. So it's terminated in both ends and the ring doesn't have any uh, beginning or end. So we have the point-to-point -point topology. So this point-to-point uh, -point topology is normally from your base station to your another station. It's like establishing, uh, uh, connecting uh, one island to another island by using uh, tower. So this is uh, one of the uh, application of wireless uh, air, uh, wide area network, which uh, provides direct link uh, between two devices and this can be used in a business network such as a local phone company. Now for another example for your network topology, so we have point to multipoint. So this is a, a point to point is P2P and this is a P2M. So this uh, uh, point to point, uh, point to multipoint uh, topology, uh, the arrangement which a central device communicates to two or more uh, devices and all communication goes through the central device then it's often uh, in a wireless uh, wide area network where the main office connections to the several branch via the router now we have the mesh uh, topology so the mesh topology so connects each uh, device to every other device in a network so in other way so if we have ring we have only this one now for the mesh all uh, cities are connected via wire, uh, wide area network link so uh, the full mesh topology uh, between uh, this uh, image uh, signifies there are uh, between uh, four locations with a switch on each location providing uh, connectivity to multiple computers. So each switch is connected to every other switch. This is what we call a full mesh when uh, each uh, switch is connected to every other switch. Now. Uh, this topology is used uh, commonly in large internet networks and uh, wide area network where routers or switches in um, multiple buildings or towns are connected in partial or in full mesh. Mesh topologies, although they are reliable, they are also expensive because of the additional cabling and ports required. In most cases, the ports used in, uh, to connect devices 
are the highest speed available such as 1 gigabit per second or 10 gigabit per second. So they are often uh, used ex expensive fiber optic cabling for connecting buildings. So because uh, fiber optic could have lesser loss compared to uh, uh, UTP cable. Now, uh, in summary of our network topology, so here are the uh, logical topology which describes how data transfer uh, travels or from computer to computer. In some cases, as with the physical bus and physical ring, the logical topology mimics the uh, physical arrangement of the cables. So usually, uh, we have bus topology but you could have Ethernet uh, used. Uh, this is cable. And uh, you could have a bus or star uh, de uh, design in bus topology, as well as you could have wireless LAN also in a bus topology. And mostly when we have wireless LAN, it is star. Because you could distribute data between uh, wireless devices. So this is star and you could uh, perform uh, uh, central access point. Although a bus is obsolete, there are some uh, devices still use uh, this type of uh, method because it's easier to configure if you only have a few devices. That is for bus. Now for the logical topology on a ring. So we have a talking ring, a talk, token ring and a the fiber distributed uh, data interface. So this uh, topology is uh, in star and you have ring topology. So token ring networks use central device such as multi-station uh, access unit. Uh, its electronics form a logical ring. So the data is passed from computer to computer in order to uh, reach the destination device. So with this token, you could be able to transfer data from one computer to another. So without this uh, passcode or token, you could not uh, able to send the data without the token because you need to transfer uh, this token to each computer until you reach your destination. Now for fiber distributed network, uh, fiber distributed data interface ring, so as discussed, so these devices uh, connected in physical ring, the data uh, passes from device to device until it reaches the destination. Now, the very common logical topology nowadays, we have the switch. So we use Ethernet technology and uh, we use star. So the switch logical topology using physical star topology running Ethernet is far by the most common topology nowadays and uh, it will be uh, into the future also. It creates dynamic connections of circuits between two devices whenever data is sent. This topology is sometimes considered a switch point to point uh, topology because the circuit is established between two points as needed to transfer uh, data. And uh, then the circuit is broken when it's no longer needed. So that's it for the summary for network te technology. So, so we have now to discuss the, uh, the parts or the cables used in uh, the technologies used in uh, networking. By the way, did you discuss this also in uh, your networking one, this topic? So network technology means uh, the communication medium you use. So when it comes to your switch, so the standard for wireless fidelity or Wi-Fi is uh, 802.11. Uh, and uh, some combination of these and other technologies to move data from device to device in your network. And we use uh, usually uh, an shielded twisted pair is the common uh, media type in uh, local area networks. And it consists of four pairs of copper wire with each pair slightly twisted to contain this plastic sh uh, sheet and uh, or jacket. So as you can see, there is twisted uh, copper wires here 
and they're uh, after these colors are twisted so they are also twisted inside so that they could be able to uh, uh, get in in the uh, plastic sheet and uh, it comes with the uh, numbered categories so when you're going to buy a cable a UTP cable as we mentioned so you're going to select what category are you going to use the higher the category is the higher uh, its uh, speed is uh, going up to 10 gigabit per second and we have also the uh, one of the new maybe not new but uh, emerging uh, cabling uh, technology nowadays this is basically used in telecommunication but now we it reaches the uh, home network so fiber optic is a uh, it's a strands of glass to carry pulses of light uh, along distances at the high data rates. So it's uh, usually uh, used in large internet work to connect switches and routers and sometimes to connect uh, high-speed servers to the network. Because the capability to carry data over long distances is also uh, one of the advantages it's also used in a wide area uh, network application frequently and uh, the other is used for receiving the fiber optic cabling is not susceptible to, uh, this is the advantage compared to uh, UTP cable because UTP cable is susceptible to uh, electrical interference for example uh, when there is rain and uh, the surroundings uh, wet so the resistance uh, becomes uh, low and that's why you have a disconnection in your internet connection when you use cable if uh, if you have a, a very uh, low resistance environment so So that's how uh, the advantages of uh, fiber optic. So inside the fiber, inside here, how does uh, we transfer data from uh, the fiber? So there is a total reflection uh, uh, coefficient inside where the light cannot escape. What the light uh, will do is to reflect on the glass. So when the light reflect to the glass so it continuously uh, reaches to uh, another point until it uh, transfer the uh, information so this is uh, using light as a medium of uh, uh, data transfer so this is activated by the reflection of light inside the glass of each uh, strand now this one is the old technology we use but still we still use this in uh, our television and uh, coaxial is also used in uh, old times in uh, but it has a limitation of 200 meters and uh, it has only a limitation of uh, uh, 10 megabit per second half duplex this makes it obsolete for uh, local area network uh, applications Now, how do we uh, transfer or uh, transmit a uh, signal? So in network technology, we could transmit by the way of baseband and broadband. So baseband transmission uh, send digital signal in the each bit of data that is represented by a pulse of electricity or light using fiber optic. So that is what we call baseband. Now for broadband, so uh, cable TV and uh, cable modem internet use uh, broadband transmission instead of digital pulses broadband systems use analog techniques to encode binary ones and zeros across continuous range of values so the difference is that uh, basement is in uh, frames or they transfer by on uh, using a single fixed frequency while uh, broadband transmission is on the uh, 
analog techniques to encode uh, binary ones and zeros. Uh, that's the difference between uh, baseband and broadband uh, transmission. Now we have another uh, technology use, very common. This is Ethernet. So this is used uh, usually in uh, various uh, cabling. And uh, with this, you could be able to uh, uh, use a switch. And these devices can support multiple uh, Ethernet speeds. Now we have the network reference model. So now we're going to compare uh, uh, OSI and TCP IP model. So OSI, we have how many layers? So we have seven layers. This is standard. And uh, you have TCP IP model also. We have how many layers? We have four layers. And each uh, layer has its own uh, applications so what you're going what is present on this layer what is uh, is being uh, used in this layer and uh, on the output layer what is uh, being uh, transferred now uh, the difference is that you have a new network access layer which consists your data link and physical uh, layer from OSI and the, your inter-network layer is Focus more on the network, which you have the ICMP, the IP, and the ARP. And your transport, consider your TCP and UDP. And your session, presentation, and application, consider your website and other uh, web address. Now, uh, this is how we're going to check your uh, uh, application layer by uh, checking your Ethernet properties. So this uh, means uh, this divides the whole. So if you're going to open your control panel, network and internet, and you're going to browse on your Ethernet properties. So on the first uh, label, you have this brand of your uh, network adapter or your network interface card. So that would be your physical and data link. And for the second one, you have this a client for Microsoft Network and the file and printer sharing for Microsoft Network are considered to be session, presentation, and application layers. And for your IP version 4 and IP version 6, that will be a part of your network and transport layer. Now, as a summary, so uh, for your TCP IP, so transport layer uses your uh, segment. So PDO is your protocol uh, data unit, uh, meaning what uh, we're going to use, what type of uh, information. This uh, segment came from your protocol, TCP and UDP. So the devices, since it's already in your segment so there are no devices but it ensures the delivery of data and breaks the data into segments and handles sequencing and acknowledgement and provides flow control now for the third one so you have your uh, pdu as packet since you could be able still to recover this so we have internet protocol, the internet uh, control messaging protocol, the address resolution protocol. So you have uh, the devices you are going to use for your network. That would be routers, firewalls, and layer three switches. Now uh, we have the second to the last data link layer. So normally data link layer is on your, on this side, data link. It's already in your network access layer. So data link uh, provides us uh, information about the frame and uh, the Ethernet token and uh, other devices, the drivers. This includes the switches and the network interface cards. It provides physical device addressing, device to device delivery of frames, media access control and addresses. And now for the last uh, segment or part, 
your physical layer provides us bits of information but still there's no protocol yet the protocol will arrive when it will be converted by your data link layer and being uh, transferred into your frame and this frame will be inside your pocket then this pocket will be segmented to your transport layer to be able to uh, communicate with the web services so that's the reference model for TCP and the uh, OSI summary now uh, uh, some of the standard here will uh, be part of your test so you're just going to read all of this because this is just uh, saying uh, what is the uh, wireless network for 802.11 so this is 802.11 this is your Wi-Fi what is the standard for metropolitan area network so you have 802.6 and also you have uh, your Bluetooth is usually your wireless personal area network or WPAN. So this is your Bluetooth 802.15. And for the other parts, we have wireless uh, metropolitan area network or WiMAX. So that's 802.16. And there are others available. So uh, your 802 uh, specification, uh, it expands the OSI model, which is seven layers. And uh, at uh, physical and data link layers, it shows that 802 standards provide more detail by separating a data link layer into sub layers. So logical link control, which uh, can be which you use for error recovery and flow control, your media access control for controlling access to network media is a uh, part of your data link uh, layer now for the summary so we have uh, uh, finished uh, our lecture on uh, the application of the OSI model so application provide access to network resources uh, presentation it handles data formatting and translation and for your session, it manages the ongoing conversation between two computers. And uh, for your transport layer, it breaks long data streams into smaller chunks uh, like segment. And for your network, it provides best path uh, selection and IP addressing. Now for your data link layer, it defines how computer access the media. And for your physical uh, layer, it converts bits into signals and defines the media and connectors. The 802 uh, IEEE 802 uh, project defines networking standards in more than 20 categories. Categories and it, it ensure uh, network interfaces and cabling from different manufacturers are compatible. So that's why we have these standards to make all uh compatibility issue uh, uh be uh neglected in each manufacturer so 802.2 uh standard specify uh, uh physical and data link layers by dividing data link into sub layer so we have logical link control and uh and media access control together these sub layers handle uh, media access addressing and access control and provide reliable and error-free delivery of frames from one computer to another i think we are finished with uh, our lecture because this would be a different topic next week monday so this is more on uh, problem solving okay so i think we will stop here so any questions about the lecture? I'm sorry. Did you discuss this also in your networking one?